this from all the participants about uh, the questions. So we will uh, discuss about them. And uh, finally, if we have time, we will have one or two uh, question and answer. So yeah, so at the beginning, we invite uh, top, top one team to make the presentation from the how and the single 
definition of what's going on in the uh, data preprocessing. So as you can see, it's very condensed, and you can understand what's going on at a single glance. You don't need to uh, think uh, much uh, over it. And as for the preprocessing, we use uh, different levels of uh, strategies. The, the, the most simple one is to stemming as a textbook preprocessing. And then we use a very simple Bible board approach with one or some milligrams or vitamins. It's very, very standard. If you, if you are doing something with text preprocessing, it's very much. Um, and for categorical columns, we use one of them. So also a very standard um, More advanced uh, techniques that we used was to use characters instead of um, words for preprocessing. That's also uh, not uncommon to see in the competitions and in uh, machine learning. And then, uh, just as, as the time evolves in the competition, we found out more, um, time, more, more tricks. Uh, like the, the one that I mentioned is joining names, description, and brand names together. And also a very interesting uh, idea to pre-process the, um, for example, if someone sells 10 lipsticks, five brushes, and you know, 10, uh, the shades, eye shades, like so. Uh, it's to make it easier from the model to understand what's going on. We created this uh, non-standard uh, uh, vectorization for text that created for each uh, type of type of the product. It created a column with the number of items in, in this category. So this was a very important thing because we noticed that many of the errors come from bundle items when people sell more than one item on a, in a single auction. It, it creates a very big error in the data set, and we wanted to reduce this error. And why uh, did we use Ansible at all? It's obvious uh, for the kind of computers here, I and mean, I know that some of you are kind of computers, that more models need better results. In this competition, we need constraints, so we have only one, one machine with four cores. So it was obvious for us to stop at four models per data set. More was impossible because we didn't have uh, more time to compute our models. And this is uh, a chart that represents how much the diversity influences the uh, model performance. When, if you can see that um, if you combine 12 models of the same kind, this is the last but one column, you get, okay, you, you can get, get some uh, improvement, but it's better to calculate three data sets with uh, four models each. So we get the diversity from the data, uh, data sets and not from the models. This is also interesting. If you, if you are competing in a competition, it's normal uh, that uh, you improve the results by going step by step. Not, it's not like linear improvement, but uh, you gain the, more, the most score with tricks. If you find a simple trick, you improve. And uh, the most improvement came from our merging. And then we found, found more trees. All, all these steps that are almost vertical are a single tree that we have uh, found. And it's also, also very typical for competitions. And this is the most important. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mary, for inviting us. So uh, I, I described the model in more detail. So this is a standard multi-layer uh, feed-forward neural network. Uh, and uh, so why uh, why this model and why not something more modern and more uh, popular, perhaps? Uh, I think in this competition, it was really important to combine uh, categorical features like category brand with uh, text features. Uh, and uh, this model uh, merges these features uh, right uh, at the start in the first layer. As you can see, you can have a condition uh, of like one uh, node in the second layer. You can uh, see that uh, this is like shipping in which category and which words are in the data set. So th this model uh, beat a lot of, uh, outperformed a lot of uh, our efforts at feature engineering and was doing this feature engineering uh, all by itself.
And uh, another advantage uh, of this model is that uh, it is uh, much faster to train uh, compared to uh, recurrent or convolutional neural networks. Uh, especially on the CPU. So we were able to train a 10 times bigger hidden layer uh, compared to usual architectures in the same time. And I think that's uh, like the, the most uh, important feat. Uh, so I'll, I think I'll skip. Uh, yeah, about the implementation. So we used uh, TensorFlow and uh, we also then switched to MXNet because it supported sparse updates. So it was faster. It was uh, also important. And yeah, I think I'll, uh, yeah, and at the end, uh, so in order to merge the data sets, we used a single uh, lasso uh, model, which is a, a linear regression, and it helped to uh, average. And as you can see, uh, all the coefficients are relatively close, so all models are strong on their own as well. Um, I think I will conclude this. Uh, yeah, so uh, and to summarize, we had a one model kind and multiple data sets and use a sparse MLP. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, introduction. So since the time is very limited, so let's directly go to the second uh, presentation and uh, I will make the Q&A after all this. So the second one is from Mr. Ying. I think he, won the, he was the third place winner. So please go ahead. Uh, also, I one hot, uh, one hot category times, two, times three. 
and uh, other other things are normal because this is uh, length of description and the mean uh, price of the count of the category third. So I spend a lot of I spend a lot of time to uh, construct the structure of a neural network. Yeah, I try a lot and uh, I think it is a. Uh, it may, may not be the best, but it will be the fastest. I use the convolution neural network to uh, process the uh, name, brand, uh, description, and uh, attention. Attention is very fast, so you can grab uh, some uh, some some information. I use the, I use the, I use the attention and the convolution data too. The texture feature and uh, embedding the uh, category and the others, uh, others uh, you put the continuous feature, so I use the dense layer. Yeah, I, I, I do a lot to the uh, training, uh, training uh, learning rate and uh, batch size and the uh, number of training data. And, uh, I, I I think uh, we should uh, <coughs> we should use a small batch size and uh, uh, large learning rates to at the first of the at the first of training process. So I I used uh, about uh, uh, nine hundred batch size and uh, uh, and uh, and then at the last uh, you can see the batch size is larger and larger. So. Uh, we can learn more, learn more from the data, uh, and learn deeper. And at last, uh, I I find to the data of women and beauty. So it is the biggest uh, part of the data. I hope it will do. I hope I hope my model will do better on this part. So uh, I change another apple. <coughs> And the uh, factorization uh, machine model, I, uh, I, I, I build the model based on the anti, uh, the bus the length uh, anti, the open, op open, open source code. So uh, I, did, uh, I, I did something like Yeah, like uh, uh, like I said, the uh, apple below ten. So I find it uh, all fit easily because it has too many parameters, and uh, the word the word dictionary is very large. So we can see in the uh, in the in the in the in the, uh, in the part two of the condition many. When many many player fail their kernel, so I I do something to uh, fix the uh, fix the problem. And uh, I some interesting finding. Yeah, the score will rise when you spend more time on the manual work. Like the uh, cell phone name, you can remove the blank from the uh, between the iPhone and the cell, and then you can fix the branch later. Uh, even some few minutes later, I I I don't I, I'm not good at it, and uh, so I I try to find the uh, in the dictionary, and uh, I I yeah the most of things uh, the most thing I I did is to make a model to find the gradient more easy than others, so you can see I can have the different texture and uh, to adjust the batch size. <coughs> so it would, uh, it would run in, uh, in uh, 16 uh, minutes. Yeah, uh, and at last uh, I assemble with the uh, um, net neural network model and uh, uh, factorization, model, factorization machine model. So that is the final score. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next uh, presenter is from Mr. Chen. The fourth place winner. Uh, thank you. It's an honor to be here and thanks to America for the inviting. Uh, I'm Chen Chen Long. Can you call me Chen Long? Uh, 
Mr. Aula of, the, of my presentation and I first introduce myself. I am, I got my PhD degree in uh, University in China. Uh, uh, during the PhD, I, I developed algorithms to de detect images virtually. So um, I have a background uh, of imaging or computer vision. And then I'm now an NLP algorithm engineer at Alibaba, and I work in the knowledge cloud team, and we develop and we, we, we try to solve some problem with technology cloud and PQA and chatbot. And uh, my story with Kaggle, uh, I turned into local, then I met Kaggle in 2013. I want to research relevance condition. One is the cloud follow in the first place, and the third place in the quantity part search relevance condition. They are all about NLP. NLP. Uh, here's my pre processing and vision engineering for the Macquarie data. I did uh, the minimum process. For the text textual data, I only use tokenization and then I uh, use label encoding and then padding and truncating. And, the, and the, for the category feature, like the brand name and the category name, I, I only use label encoder, label encoding. Then for all those data, I model them, use the deep and model. Yes. This, uh, uh, because uh, when I, when I do, do this competition, I have do some research on the FM model and, and, and deep learning based FM model, like AFM, attention, generalization machine, and deep FM. So I, I found the data is very simple. Use this uh, kind of architecture to model. So I use this architecture. And I did something very special for, for, the, for the data. Like here, for the text, for the text, I use the text embedding layer, and then I, I will uh, describe about some details about the text embedding. And for the ID, I use uh, the normal embedding, and then we use FM FM layer like FM factorization machine. This is the for the text embedding layer. We have all the for a sentence. We have all the work <coughs> to our ID to ID. And then I use uh, embedding matrix lookup table, uh, mapping them to the dense vector. We, we have a dense vector, word vectors. And then for the word vectors, we use an encoder, like CNN or RNN. We get a sentence matrix. Uh, this sentence matrix encodes some, some of the local context or, or the global context. When you use CNN, you can use <coughs> Class two or three, then you have the uh, the bigram or the trigram, the context information. When you use RN, you have the global information. And then we use a an uh, tent layer, attention layer, to collapse all the sentence matrix to one dense vector. For the attention method, you can use the normal like average query, max query, and also self attention. And final, I use the the one uh, colored in red. Uh, for the FM model, the idea is to model the interactions between different fields. Since we have different uh, kind of features like texture and uh, category name, we, we want to model the interaction between them, so we use the FM layer. And FM layer is very easy to implement with, with uh, line TensorFlow. You can just use this, this uh, several lines of code. You can use the uh, you can model a uh, FM. For well, here, you model the the, the intention between the sentence of name and sentence of description and others like brand name and category. We also this uh, you can see the the first two one is the sentence vector of name and the sentence vector of the item description. They are global sentence <coughs> vector for the whole sentence. That's a very, very uh, high level, uh, high level uh, action. Actually, actually, you can use the whole sentence matrix instead of the sentence vector. Then you have the word level FM. You can also put this into the FM architecture. 
Yes. Uh, and for the BNM, I have tried um, the pure NLP and also the ResNet and some and DenseNet. But uh, ResNet and DenseNet have the super performance, but they 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 are very slow. So I finally I use the NLP and it's efficient and accurate. The training method I use the lazy Nadam. Lazy is very uh, very suitable for sparse gradient. You can use the uh, TensorFlow has lazy uh, Adam and other other optimizer. I I implement this in myself to uh, to 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 improve the speed. And for the running rate, running rate schedule, I use the uh, the very very uh, unnormal running rate. It it restarts with uh, it restarts for the first uh, for the first few epoch. Your running rate lies that you can. Uh, uh, decrease from one one point zero to zero, and then they go up to the original value, and then you drop, and then <coughs> you go out to the to the original value. This is used to work with snapshot ensemble. This is my method for the ensemble. You when you use uh, the standard uh, LR uh, schedule, you decay the L <coughs> to zero, and then you will find. This is the cost of a uh, cost surface. You will find a global minimum. You will find a global minimum around the way. But but actually, you can use a synchronic L1. You will restart. You uh, you will touch a, a several uh, a lo local minimum. Then and then you average the, the local minimum. You get uh, your snapshot. You you get your ensemble. This is my method for ensemble. Right? Uh, on the chart, you can see the the blue the blue node is for the single model. In the first epoch, the first four the four first four node they decrease the decrease the loss, and then the the orange orange color node is the snapshot of the last last snapshot. The score of the last snapshot. As you can see, we. Uh, we can look from the the beginning to the to uh, from right to left. You can see when I ensemble uh, with more snapshot, the 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 score goes down. Yeah. Since this uh, competition have uh, some constraint on the time limit and the computation resources, and uh, I pay some attention with the efficiency. In model, we finally use the fastest and average moving, and we also use snapshot instead of an average task to track only one neural architecture. But we take seven snapshots to get an ensemble result to improve the accuracy. Uh, for TensorFlow, we, we use the tilde parallelism of the threads. We also use optimizers for the lazy update. And Python, there are some tricks like binding method to uh, outside of the food to reduce the overhead. This is taken from the succulent. succulent. Yes, this is summary of my uh, my solution. Uh, the code is open source in the GitHub. You can have a check. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for your wonderful sharing. So to do a very quick survey, uh, how many of you who don't understand uh, their introduction? So now I'm very released. So <laughs> okay. So we uh, so when you register the event, uh, we collect lot, several questions um, from you, all the audience. So we picked up several co very common ones to ask, discuss with them, and sharing their uh, experiences. For, for those who don't know me, I'm Hao Zhang. I'm a machine learning engineer at Marapali. So I helped with making this competition data set and uh, matrix design. So I'm super excited for hearing their models. So thank you. So the first question is very general. So what inspired you to get into Kaggle competition? Uh, because you spend lots of time on the Kaggle. Uh, so, what is your motivation? Because you, you may uh, participate for many years. So, how do you keep your motivation? So, let's start.
start with uh, uh, post okay. So uh, I think that uh, what inspired me was uh, I was interested in um, machine learning and artificial intelligence before that, but uh, I got uh, into a, a Russian a Slack community uh, with a lot of people doing competitions already, and so the community really got me interested into it. And uh, my first competition was about uh, satellite imagery uh, segmentation, and it was uh, really a very steep learning curve, <coughs> but it was extremely interesting, especially because my uh, job at that time was not related to machine learning, but I wanted to do machine learning. So for me, it was a way to uh, get uh, a lot of experience very quickly. At first, at first when I uh, started learning about machine learning, it was uh, about, um, about uh, seven years ago, I took the ML class. The first edition of Coursera class uh, by Andrew. I know. I know that uh, many of you know the, uh, this course. And at first, the first competition was I wanted to uh, test uh, in practice what I learned in the, uh, during the course. And uh, I noticed that uh, I'm quite good, so I continued. And then it's uh, very easy to compete because it's very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> it's very very addictive. And it's uh, the motivation defines itself. You don't have to uh, like work hard to be motivated because you see moving up on the leaderboard is very motivating. This is my main motivation. Yes. So that works well for top cutlers. For example, if I participate in a cargo competition and I rank very low, so probably I lose my motivation. So how, how do you think about that? I think it's uh, just a question of how much you spend uh, time in the competition. <laughs> because uh, if you if you are stuck, that means that you must change, like uh, take like one eighty degrees turn and uh, stop doing what you're doing and <laughs> and uh, try something new. And uh, if you try many things, you will improve your score. I mean, I'm sure. It's only a question of time, not a question of experience. Because I am sure you have experience. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, I spend my time on the data and the machine learning in about one year. Yeah, last year I, I found I my, found my interest in the data processing. So I took some competition in the China, Chinese platform, and, uh, and I found that the cargo gathered the most interesting people and uh, crazy thoughts so I can communicate with them and the uh, cargo. So I, I, I can, yeah. Uh, I, I have a similar uh, experience with power. Uh, uh, it dates back uh, in 2013 when I take uh, uh, another course like uh, Machine Learning Foundation in Crossiron. The professor, uh, by, by before the end of the class, Professor Lin, the lecturer, uh, encouraged us to take some uh, practice in cargo, since cargo can offer different very kinds of problems with real real data. So you can practice what you have learned, and you can improve yourself. Uh, uh, and my motivation for uh, digging into cargo is to uh, evaluate and to improve what I have learned. Just spend more time on cover competition, and you will find your motivation automatic. So, so many. So my uh, the second question is: so lots of people care. Uh, how do you win a cover competition? What's the secret or most important part? For example, there's data exploration, feature engineering, model selection, or model design, or model tuning. So uh, please share your experience. So I, I think that the secret to winning is uh, like to, to, uh, to do what you think the winner of the competition would do. Because it is very tempting to do what you understand and what you know, so to build a simple baseline, that's okay, but then you, uh, try, you, you should not try to just improve a little on what you do, but try to think what would the top guy do it and do this instead. I think yeah, that's the, the most important part. And another thing is to choose your battle 
like uh, different competitions are very different and some and so choose what is more inspiring to you. Don't try to compete in every competition. I was second, Constantin was first, and I thought I want to win this competition, so why, why not merge with the first <laughs> person on the leaderboard? So that was very important for me. And uh, the secret is again the time you spend. Because in the competitions, you never know what will work. You must try many things, and then some of them will work. And uh, it's very random in nature, so there is no simple answer to this, you must spend time. I can't agree anymore on the, about the time. So I, I must say you put more time the that uh, you may win the competition more likely. And uh, another, another thing is I think, uh, I think the imagination is more important than the experience and the knowledge. So when you say uh, type of competition or other competition, you must just think about it. What you, uh, what, 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 what sort of make you different from others? And you, and you, uh, could you try your uh, thoughts on uh, 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 change, uh, or transform it, transform it uh, to the code and uh, see how it, uh, if it will work. So if your if your thought works and the others didn't uh, find it, so you will win the competition. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the most important part may be the time and the hard work you put into the competition. You, you have to get prepared that you, you have to spend many, many time and many, 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 many hard work. In case, to, uh, in order to win a competition, you have to try different kind of things, different algorithms, different kind of processing, and, and, and then you find the, the golden one that can separate you from us. Okay, so in summary, uh, so it's uh, more time and hard work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, talk, I had a chance to talk with them uh, before this event, I said even Last night and now the show, we are doing competitions. <laughs> so we can see how hard they are. Yeah. So, so the, maybe this is the last question. Uh, so what tools do you really use for the competition, including both software and hardware? For example, so uh, do you prepare some scripts ahead before each competition? Some common use the utilities for feature extraction or for making the model easily? And uh, as you know, this time, we, this market price competition is a kernel-based competition. Do you feel it's more challenging, more interesting, or more difficult? So would you do better uh, if you don't have such a competition? In the cloud farmer condition, uh, where I am in the first place, I have developed a work from like uh, the data processing and uh, feature engineering and model building and ensembling. They are a very uh, reliable workflow. And for uh, the condition I enter later, I, op I almost, usually almost, we use reduce those codes to build the model. And for software, I, I use it like uh, like GPM and ChargeBoost and TensorFlow. They are widely used in the cargo community. Yes. Uh, uh, I use the uh, like GPM and Cross TensorFlow too, but uh, I think it is not enough. So like like this condition, the the anti load his own. Uh, FM, FM models. Yeah, I, I usually run some models uh, uh, like uh, using uh, C language to build a Python library. I thought this is uh, is necessary. And hardware, yeah, I use my own computer. Uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, like the kernel condition, uh, so I use the Carlos kernel. Yes. Yeah. <coughs>
feel it's more challenging or interesting if you it's a kernel based company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like love the idea. So we can uh, we stop stop the to uh, the many many huge amounts of uh, models to get a better score. For competition side, don't use anything that the people aren't using. So and I think it's very standard to fight on secular. I, this is, um, for some reason, I think also it's really important sometimes uh, to be able to implement your own uh, machine learning algorithms. Not only rely on uh, ready made uh, solutions, but also be able to write this uh, like stochastic gradient descent and so on. Because it, uh, in, in case of this competition, I started with implementing my own neural network. And it worked well, but not, not enough uh, to compete uh, uh, at the earlier stages, but uh, it was a good learning experience. Very important to, to be able to jump between different uh, levels of abstraction. So uh, I, I use pretty much the same uh, stack as the, the other uh, guys. So in terms of hardware, for me it was really uh, convenient to have a separate workstation, so not do any computing on the laptop because this way it doesn't overheat or it's it, it's quiet and it's convenient if you want to train something overnight. And in terms of uh, kernel competition, I think it's really, really exciting and it was by far the most exciting competition on Kaggle, uh, the Mercury Prize, due to these uh, new constraints. And I think that uh, future uh, kernel competitions will bring um, many new surprising solutions because the constraints are very different from uh, other uh, competitions. And I hope it will, will not deteriorate into an optimization game, but I, I hope it won't because machine learning has a lot of freedom uh, in the choice of algorithm and the model. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we have uh, time to pick up one question <laughs> from the audience. So anyone who want to take this great chance, precious chance. Do you think uh, watching the raw data is important or not? Raw, raw data. You mean the uh, more data exploration? So, so, sorry, is it about raw data or more data? Uh, raw. Raw. <coughs> raw. Uh, okay, so in terms of how much feature engineering is important, yes? Uh, well, I think it depends, and certainly you cannot, uh, it's hardly possible to win without doing any feature engineering. Uh, but although uh, I think one of the recent competitions was won by someone who implemented an autoencoder, and uh, all the features uh, were uh, uh, derived from that, but I think uh, feature engineering is very important both in real life and on category too. I think I agree with something, but uh, you don't have, uh, but it's easy uh, to overdo feature engineering. If you think uh, you're smarter than some algorithms, uh, sometimes you're not, really, because uh, we tried many feature engineering in this competition, many ideas, and it turned out that even the smartest ideas were like uh, not giving uh, good results. So it means that uh, these algorithms are actually smarter than you think, and it's also uh, worth to remember that uh, they are. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. The, yeah, uh, our our model is not so smart as yourself, so you need to teach them to imitate your thoughts and uh, uh, learn how to solve the problem, not let them to find the find the future. So, uh, I, for my experience, uh, part of competition, the feature engineering is very important. Different feature uh, makes a really a great. Uh, uh, I remember I uh, I once called 
uh, as a condition with all autom aut autonomous features provided, they are all IDs. You have no idea what 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 the data is. In in that case, you uh, you have very limited uh, uh, room for feature engineering or even preprocessing. Then you can only use some 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 model. You drop all the features into the model and and hope for God they learn something. But with low data, you can try try many things, you know, different preprocessing techniques and different features, and you all. Oh, you can also uh, do some data exploration to find what's in the data, and then to engineer your features and then put it in put it in model. And in that in industry, it's very important to to use your sense to feature engineering. That's my. Thank you very much. So let's uh, give big applause to them. And uh, thank you very come for uh, thank you very much for coming today. And uh, afterwards, we will uh, have a awarding <laughs> ceremony for you. ファベルさんにトロフィーを送らせていただきます。大きな拍手をお願いいたします。